Okay. Hi, everybody. How are you all doing today? Tonight? This morning? Whenever you're watching this? It is evening here in the Oak Hill household, and I get to craft. Okay, so I have, um, what have I been doing? I have been making just some random tags uh, to mail out. I'm part of a group that I would do swaps. Um, and so I've been making some tags to mail out for swapping. This is one that I made. There. There's the back of it. I have a pocket right here. This is made out of a tissue box. Isn't that fun? I, um, did a video, uh, on Facebook Live and then I forgot to save it. So I don't think I could share it here on my Facebook, on my YouTube channel. I have to figure that out. I'm still learning. Uh, and here's another one that I did. I just layered papers, different papers and fabrics. And again, this was a tissue box on a tissue box. And this is the back of it. A little pocket there. And a little pocket there. That's This actually is one of my favorites I have made in a very long time. Uh, it's a very different color scheme for what I normally do. Put a little light on it. There's some gold in there the bright reds. I love it. Um, it's not hard to give that one away, but this is what I made to go in it. Uh, it is just a fun little piece. It makes noise and it's just fun. Um, I guess technically I could probably put paper on the back that you could write on, um, but I didn't. And I need to make one or more of these to go with this tag right here. I thought especially since she's holding plants right there. So I've got another lily of the valley. This is some lily of the valley that I put in a plant flower press last year and dried. <clears throat> and uh, along with some other plants. So what I do is I get just an envelope that has one of these windows right here. And I am going to just cut out now this, don't throw away. I get, well, I guess maybe this one. A lot of times if you look inside, there is, here we go. Like here's one I did. Look, see there's patterns on the inside. So don't, don't throw this away. This goes over into my pile of scraps. This one though is plain and I think I'm just gonna toss it. Oh, it didn't go very far, okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm trying to make the sides somewhat even. I don't measure. I eyeball it. I probably should be even using a paper cutter for this, but I get such little crafting time. It takes too much time <laughs> to get out my paper cutter and to use it. So I'm just going to eyeball it and it's okay. Um, this is... I'm not going for perfection here. All right, so here I have my little piece now and I could open it up and put stuff inside of it. So what we need to do now is need to make it sturdier. So I am going to glue a thick paper onto the back to make it sturdy. I also have to attach this and I could put it directly onto the white, but I have this lovely color right here, which I do adore. This came from the inside of a card envelope. This was the outside. This was the inside. Uh, it was a, I think it was my Mother's Day card from my husband. Um, and normally I keep the cards if they're worth keeping and I toss the envelope except I saw this color. I'm like, that's a really pretty color. And I was like, am I crazy for holding on to this? And I stuck it over here and I have now used it. Um, I used it... For this tag. This is the paper I used on the background here on this tag as well as the inside of this. Uh, and so I'm going to use it again now for the inside of this one and I still have more paper over there. So reason to save your card envelopes. Now my little piece right here may not, may be a little skinny. I don't know if you could see that. Can you see how there's white on either side? That's okay. 
because as long as it's enough to fill the window because I'm going to glue this paper down inside here and it's okay if it's not the exact width or even the exact length um, and it's okay that it's a little tattered in this corner because nobody's going to see it it's going to get glued in and nobody's going to see it I'm just kind of taking some of those edges off just so it doesn't um, it lays flat I want it to lay flat at least so I am going to need the whole length of this so I will trim that off and this will go into my scrap pile and I will trim the top off I can take it all off So now let's measure it up. All right, and see now we'll see that it will fit inside. In fact, I find that it's a little bit better if you leave a little bit of edge around. It helps you to kind of fit it in better, um, and it's not such a tight fit. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to glue this down because this is going to take the longest to dry. And if I'm going to complete this project in a video, Then I need to do that first. Now what I do is I want to get this placed just right. So I'm going to lay it in and I'm going to fiddle with it until I have it where I want it. So I need to trim it. All right, so now I have it in the spot I want. Now this is where I do get a little technical because I haven't figured out a better way of doing this, a better way of gluing this down and getting it in the exact spot. So I'm going to put a pencil mark right underneath the stem. I'm kind of marking where I want it to go and I'm going to mark a dot under two of the flowers. Okay. So I've given, made myself a little map. I'm gonna line up the stem here to here, and then two of the flowers right on those dots. I don't know if you can see that. So now, this is where I wish I forgot to fix my little bottle of glue. Oh, there's glue coming out of it. I think we might have glue. Uh, before I do that though, you know what, I want to cut this little piece off right here if I can do it. Yeah, I like that better. Now very carefully, I am going to put the smallest dab of glue on each flower. I'm just going to barely run the glue down the stem, trying to just get the thinnest line. Now I know there's glues out there that have these teeny tiny pieces to them. You can get more exact with. I just don't have that. This is what I have. So I'm making do with what I have. Okay, now comes the tricky part. We're going to line it all up. That's how I know it's gonna fit. All right, so I got my two flowers on their spots and I can twist them if I need to, to then line up my two lines. And I'm gonna gently push down. Now, one of the issues with using dried flowers is that even though I used a flower press, sometimes it's not exactly flat. So when I push down on this side, this side wants to lift up. When I push down on this side, this side wants to lift up. So this is what I do. First, I try to remove excess glue if possible. Any glue that's kind of sticking out the side of the stem. There you go. And then I am going to use something that is heavy but not super heavy so my trusty buttons 
and my little glue bottle. And those are gonna hold down those two ends while it dries. And then I can move on to working on this piece. Now the reason I didn't glue the paper in first and then glue that in is because, like I said, I'm trying to do this all in one video. Uh, so while that's gluing, I am gonna work on this. So the back paper I'm gonna use is this. Oh, just a little short. Okay, so we'll have to go up the length of it. So what you can do is you could just lay this down on your paper, get a pencil, trace it out. Here we go. Cut it out. Now comes the most exciting part of Jen's video. Me attempting to cut a straight line. <laughs> Today was a beautiful day here. It got a little hot in the afternoon, which for Michigan, 80 is hot. And, but it was nice. I sat out in the shade with my youngest. She played with water. I played with some wool. I uh, like to knit. I also have a spinning wheel. I like to spin. Which is part of the reason why I don't have enough time to do all the junk journaling that I want to do. Ah, uh, see? It wasn't fitting right. I don't know if you noticed that. So I tried to put it here and it wasn't fitting right. See? <laughs> It's because I can't cut a straight line for the original one, but if I flipped it this way, now it fits right because that's how I traced it. It was that's the direction it was when I traced it. So you see, now it fits well. Now we glue it down. Glue stick. I'm not supposed to glue me. There we go. Of course, now do I have it the right way? We're about to find out, aren't we? Line up my corners. Pretty good. Now, do not fear if it's off a little. Like, mine is off a little. Do not fear. I'm not going to try and peel that up and try and mess with it and fix it. Run the chance of ripping the paper or getting glue on this side of the paper and messing it up because you know how you fix it. It's quite simple. Take the scissors and you just trim it. There we go. So now we have the back side finished. Now the front side. Now I know many people who do they do these. Um, <clears throat> they will cut paper and cut strips and attempt to cover up all of these edges. I do something a little different, and that's because I am a lover of my ink. I do love my ink. So I'm attempting to make this go with this tag. So I think I'm going to go for a bluish color. And what I do, I have distressed inks, I have these little mini ones. And I find that sometimes this color is not good enough to tell. So I actually did this. I did a little sample of each one and then I wrote the color of it right on the card help if it wasn't upside down. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, so I can actually see the colors of what they really look like on paper. And I could do this kind of thing. I could put it up close to it and I could check it out. And I think I'm going to go with the Mermaid Lagoon, this bright one. So I'm pretty sure that's what I used here on the edges. And I think that's what best goes with this. This has got 
It's too dark, and this one is not bright enough. And that's all I own, so that's what I gotta work with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use ink to cover up this white. That's my plan. And I actually could. All right, hold the phone. Hold the phone a minute. I'm thinking we could do two toned. Let's do two toned. Let's get a green. I'm thinking this crushed olive. Let's do the crushed olive. All right, so I'm going to do a first layer of crushed olive. This is my lighter color, and I'm going to intend my purpose is to get m almost all of this white covered up with the crushed olive. And one of the keys to using uh, distrust inks and these I have found is to just keep moving. Keep your brush, keep your foam, whatever you're using, keep it moving. Now it's a little tricky because it's kind of flimsy. I've got this. What is this? Plastic? The see-through part? So I'm going to need to be really, really careful with this. I'm trying to use pressure to give enough color but I'm also trying to not rip it. I really don't want to start over again. So I'm just going to very carefully get in there. Right. And this edge is a lot stronger, it's thicker, so I can almost, I'm holding it in my hand and I'm able to really direct the color to where I want it. Okay, now I've almost covered up all the white, and yes, there are these numbers here. This is a junk journal. I love showing off the junk. I love showing off the fact that I repurposed an envelope. I want them to know that's what I did, and so I'm happy that those colors, that those numbers are there. I think it adds to it. Um, there's people who pay big money to get stamps and things to add that to their junk journals. Okay, I'm going to start off with just running over the edge. Yeah, I think I'm going to come in a little bit more with it. suddenly is not even. So I'll trim that off. Now normally I probably would glue this in. Probably would glue this in and then do this edge inking because when you go to glue stuff in it kind of moves, it shifts a little. But again I'm trying to let that dry. Because if it's not all the way dried I am not going to be able to glue this whole thing together. But I can get it mostly done. You know, it's interesting, this blue is mixing with the yellow and definitely making a greenish color. I think I like it though. See, this is where it's gonna be going, see? And you see how using the two different colors, it really makes it kind of stand out more. I like that. And don't forget the back, okay? Because just because we used colored paper here doesn't mean it couldn't go, couldn't be helped with an edge. Can you see the difference already? Adding an edge to it. Here, let's put it. So here it is with the edge. Here it is without the edge. Makes a big difference. At least I think so. Okay, maybe not a big difference, but it makes a difference. And I just made love my ink just too much. <laughs> Don't hold it against me. Uh, 
sometimes I like to get into the corners and just kind of add a bit more, kind of round off the corners a bit. All right. There we go. Let's see. All right. We dried pretty flat. There's a bit more glue right there. Unfortunately, this is not dry, but I can at least show you what it would look like. So the next step, what I would do when this is all dry is I would coat this with glue. I would probably use tacky glue only because trying to put a glue stick on, I would have to lay this down and rub the glue stick on top and I could damage the flowers on the other side. If you were careful and gentle, and I guess depending on what's on the other side, you probably could get away with using a glue stick. But I would suggest using a different a liquid glue. So what I would do first is coat that with glue, and then I would lay it in to its spot, and I would make sure it's in the right spot, okay? because you still have a chance to kind of scooch it a little bit and move it, okay? Once it's in the spot that you like, so imagine that's all glued down now. Now you take the same liquid glue, and you're gonna go right along the edge here, and you're gonna carefully close it up, okay? I have found that sometimes it is helpful to, you can either do the same thing where you kind of use a, he a heavier item to lay on top of it, or you can use binder clips to hold it into place, or you can use clothespins, um, any of that. So, um, it might, sometimes I do, sometimes the, it just wants to come apart for a little bit. You might need to hold it into place, but there you have that. And then what I do sometimes, which I didn't do with the other one, I did this last time, is sometimes I might just add a few, I might add a word or two. I might get into my word stickers, right? And see, this one is going with this tag here. So, ah, right there. Dreams of beauty. Oh, could you be any more perfect? Right? Right? So when this is all said and done, I will probably use this sticker and I will probably put it right across the bottom right there. Um, and then I would call this done. Now, if you were going to put this, like this is just going to go in this open pocket. So it's really easy to take out. But I did once use one of these where I kind of slid it into a long pocket. And in that instance, I added just a bit of fabric to the end here to create a pull. Um, let me see if I can do I have something to show you? I should make another one. See, I didn't even, I forgot that I even did that until right now when I'm saying that. Okay, so imagine all this extra fabric is not there. It was just like this. I added just a bit of fabric at the top, folded over, and I stapled it on. And then that created a pull that you could use to pull it out. I mean, you could just do that if you wanted to, to add just a bit of decoration to it. I might just do that. I might just do that for the fun of it because I kind of like it. Um, so you could have just a bit of lace here, fold it over, just like that. There you go. Use a stapler, staple it on, and there you go. All right, well, I didn't get it completely finished because it's still a little wet in there and I don't want to take the chance of getting glue, wet glue on this because that would show. I would show the wet glue there and I just don't want to do that. But I think I've shown you enough of how to do this. So oh, I think I'm going to use this to finish it up. And um, that's it. Thanks for joining me tonight. My little project. I'm going to finish this up, get this card in the mail, and then back to my, oh, I'm going to call it Mystical Forest Junk Journal. Uh, I've got a new, I had this great idea. 
of how to use a tissue box. Again, I'm stuck on tissue boxes right now, but that will be the next video to come soon. So see you then. Bye.